Chapter 13. Devastated. Cora resumed her role as commander of her conscript unit. The brief period of respite and emotional connection she had experienced with Nakia seemed like a distant memory. The reality of their grim mission came flooding back with full force, eclipsing the warmth and solace she had found in Nakia's company. Standing before her unit, Cora's demeanor shifted almost instantly. The relaxed and more open version of herself, which had emerged during her time with Nakia, was quickly replaced by the hardened, focused commander that her soldiers became quickly familiar with. The weight of responsibility and the nature of their orders reasserted themselves, pushing her personal feelings and experiences into the background. Addressing her troops, Cora's voice was steady and devoid of emotion. This planet is inhabited by species similar to those we encountered on the last one. We're expected to have it cleansed within a week. As she relayed the orders, the haunting memories of their previous cleansing missions resurfaced in her mind, a stark reminder of the atrocities they were compelled to commit under Draxarian rule. The horrors of what they had done and what they were about to do again weighed heavily on Korra. Yet she pushed these thoughts down, locking away the emotions that threatened to surface. She knew that showing any sign of weakness or hesitation could have dire consequences, not just for her, but for all those under her command. Her transformation back into Commander Korra was a defense mechanism, a way to cope with the unspeakable acts they were forced to carry out. It was a role she had learned to embrace, one that required her to suppress her true self for the sake of survival. As the conscripts prepared for the upcoming battle, Korra's mind was solely focused on the mission. The brief glimpse of humanity and vulnerability she had shown was now hidden behind the mask of the commander, a role she played all too well. Memories of her time with Nakia were tucked away in a corner of her mind, a bittersweet reminder of what could have been in a different world, a different life. For now, Commander Korra was back, leading her troops into another grim chapter of their unending service to the Draxarian Empire. The time had come as General Krasthor's command echoed through the ship, prompting the conscripts to gear up for the impending mission. The atmosphere was tense with anticipation and the unspoken understanding of what was expected of them. Cora, now at the forefront of her unit, stood resolute and composed. Beside her, a step behind, were Marcus and Hector, her trusted sub-commanders. Each of them was responsible for leading a third of the conscripts, amounting to 2,000 soldiers under their individual command. The responsibility was immense, and the weight of their upcoming task was evident in their stern expressions. As they prepared to disembark, Cora outlined her strategy to Marcus and Hector. Her plan was meticulously crafted, designed to encircle the largest settlement on the planet and strike simultaneously from three different points. This tactical approach was aimed at overwhelming the inhabitants quickly, minimizing the duration of conflict, but maximizing its effectiveness. Once the plan was set, Cora issued the command to commence the attack. The conscripts, armed and ready, lined up before the space transport portals. Each of them, including Cora, Marcus, and Hector, raised their weapons, a final moment of preparation before stepping into the fray. In unison, the conscripts stepped through the space transport portals, materializing on the planet's surface. The settlement, unaware of the impending assault, was suddenly enveloped in the chaos of battle. Cora's unit emerged from one point, Marcus and Hector's from the others, converging on the settlement with ruthless efficiency. The attack was executed with precision, a testament to the programming and conditioning the conscripts had undergone. Each unit moved in sync, their actions almost mechanical in their execution. Cora, leading from the front, displayed a level of detachment and focus that was both impressive and disconcerting. With her plan in action, the settlement fell under their might as the reality of their mission became clear. The conscripts, once ordinary people from various walks of life, were now instruments of an alien agenda, carrying out orders that went against the very essence of their humanity. For Cora, the mission was another grim reminder of the life she had been forced into. The brief moments of vulnerability and connection she had experienced with Nakia seemed like a distant dream in the face of the cold, harsh reality of her duties. As she led her troops through the settlement, 
Her mind was focused solely on the task at hand, the commander in her taking over, pushing aside any remnants of the person she once was. After ensuring that no living creature remained in the first settlement, Cora and her unit, alongside Marcus and Hector's teams, regrouped to proceed to the next target. They moved in a grim march across the alien landscape, their black armor stark against the backdrop of the foreign world. The red face screens of their helmets displayed terrain features and life forms, guiding their path and highlighting potential threats. The armor, while a symbol of their enslavement, was also a testament to the technological prowess of the Drixarians. It provided them with crucial information and protection, yet at the same time, it served as a constant reminder of the control the Drixarians exerted over them. As they approached the next settlement, the conscripts were met with an unexpected sight. The area was abandoned. Buildings stood silent, with no signs of the inhabitants they had been tasked to eliminate. Cora immediately opened a communication link to General Krasthor, who, in typical Drixarian fashion, remained a thousand yards behind the front lines. General Krasthor, the settlement is deserted. Requesting reconnaissance to determine the next course of action, Cora transmitted, her voice calm and controlled. Understood, Commander. Stand by for intel, came the General's reply. As Cora waited, an unusual sensation crept over her. Despite being encased in her armor suit, she felt the hairs on the back of her neck tingle, a primal instinct that something was amiss. She scanned the surroundings, her helmet sensors showing no immediate threats, yet the feeling persisted. Marcus, standing nearby, noticed Cora's slight shift in posture. Something wrong? he asked, her voice tinged with concern. Cora hesitated, not wanting to cause unnecessary alarm, yet unable to shake the feeling. I'm not sure. Just a feeling. Stay alert. The conscripts tightened their formation, their senses heightened. The abandoned settlement with its eerie silence added to the tension. The lack of resistance was unusual, and Cora couldn't help but wonder if this was a strategic move by the inhabitants, or if something else was at play. As they waited for the reconnaissance data from General Krasthor, Cora's mind raced with possibilities. The tingling sensation, a reminder of her human instincts beneath the layers of technology and conditioning, kept her on edge. The situation was a departure from the usual pattern of their missions, and in the unpredictable environment of alien worlds, anything was possible. The moments of waiting felt longer than they were, each passing second amplifying the sense of unease among the conscripts. Cora remained vigilant, her gaze sweeping over the desolate settlement, prepared for whatever might come next. The conscripts watched in awe as the sky above transformed into a canvas of otherworldly phenomena. The once clear expanse was now marred by the emergence of massive portals, each a swirling vortex of energy that seemed to challenge the very laws of nature. The air around them crackled with energy, an unmistakable tension that resonated with the ominous appearance of the portals. Cora, her attention fixed on the sky, felt a surge of uncertainty. This was unlike anything they had encountered before. The Drixarians, for all their advanced technology, had never displayed such a show of force in the skies. The possibility that this was the work of another alien race sent a chill down her spine. Stay sharp, she commanded, her voice cutting through the stunned silence of her unit. We don't know what's coming through those portals. Marcus and Hector, standing by her side, readied their weapons, mirroring the actions of the rest of the conscripts. The anticipation of a potential new threat superseded their initial mission objectives. As they watched, shapes began to emerge from the portals, their designs suggesting advanced technology and formidable firepower. General Krasthor's voice crackled over the comms, a rare hint of surprise in his tone. Conscripts, be prepared to engage. We are not alone in this system. The conscripts, already battle-weary, steeled themselves for a confrontation with this new, unknown adversary. Cora, her mind racing with tactical assessments, issued orders to her troops. Form defensive positions. We don't know their capabilities or intentions. Hold fire until my command. 
The conscripts observed with growing unease as the dart-like alien ships continued to emerge from the portal, aligning themselves in the sky with remarkable precision and order. The sight of these ships, sleek and menacing, created a stark contrast against the backdrop of the planet's serene atmosphere. The conscripts were accustomed to being the aggressors, the dominant force in any conflict. But now they found themselves potentially outmatched, waiting for the intentions of these new arrivals to become clear. As about a dozen of the smaller crafts had positioned themselves, a final vessel emerged from the portal, significantly larger and more imposing than the others. Its design suggested it was a command ship, likely housing the leaders or central control for these mysterious forces. This development heightened the tension among the conscripts, as the presence of a command vessel indicated a highly organized and possibly more advanced adversary. The portal closed behind them, sealing off the space through which these ships had arrived and leaving the conscripts to confront the new reality of their situation. Then, in a swift and unexpected maneuver, one of the smaller dart-like ships broke formation, speeding off towards the direction of the settlement they had just cleansed. The conscripts watched in silence, their weapons at the ready, but with no clear directive on how to engage or react. Within moments, the ship returned, rejoining its companions in the sky. The purpose of its brief departure was unclear, but it suggested a level of reconnaissance or assessment by these new beings. Cora, maintaining her composure, kept a close eye on the movements of the alien ships. Stay alert, she ordered. We don't know their capabilities, but they're obviously scouting our positions. General Krasthor's voice came over the comms again, this time with a more cautious tone. Conscripts, hold your positions. We are analyzing the situation. Do not engage unless directly attacked. Hector, standing next to Cora, asked, What do you think they want? Cora shook her head slightly, her eyes never leaving the sky. I don't know, but they're clearly not here by chance. The standoff continued, with the conscripts watching the alien ships and the ships seemingly observing them in return. It was a moment of uncertainty, a rare instance where the roles of hunter and hunted were blurred. The conscripts, so used to enforcing the will of the Drexarians, now faced the prospect of a confrontation with an unknown and potentially superior force. While keep sight of newcomers, the conscripts watched as the native inhabitants whom they had been mercilessly hunting reacted in an unexpected manner. Instead of remaining hidden, they calmly climbed upon elevated rocks and large tree-like mushrooms. It was as if they were positioning themselves to witness an anticipated event, their actions imbued with a sense of solemn ritual. Quickly they realized why the creators were now so calm as the sophisticated assault from the dart-like fighter ship sent shockwaves through the conscripts' ranks. Used to being the dominant force in any confrontation, they now found themselves outmaneuvered and outgunned by this unknown enemy. The arrival of these advanced alien ships, coupled with the natives' lack of fear, suggested that the conscripts were facing a force unlike any they had encountered before. General Krasthor, who had always maintained a semblance of control and composure, was visibly shaken by this unforeseen turn of events. The advanced technology and coordinated tactics of the alien fighters were unlike anything within the Drixarian arsenal, leaving him and his conscripts at a significant disadvantage. As the sleek ships descended, they swiftly organized into an attack formation, their movements precise and coordinated. The air was filled with the hum of their engines, a sound that heralded the onset of a formidable assault. Without warning, the alien fighters unleashed their firepower, Beams of concentrated energy and high-velocity projectiles sliced through the air, targeting the conscripts with unerring accuracy. The impact was immediate and devastating. Conscripts were hit, their armor offering little protection against the advanced weaponry. Korra, realizing the severity of their situation, shouted orders above the din of battle and internal comms. Find cover! Return fire! but her commands were barely audible over the chaos that had erupted around them. The disciplined formations of the conscripts quickly dissolved as they sought whatever shelter they could find. They returned fire, but their standard-issue weapons seemed inadequate against the agility and advanced defenses of the alien ships. Korra, ducking behind a fallen structure, looked around at the disarray. 
The conscripts trained for ground combat were ill-equipped to handle an aerial assault of this magnitude. She saw fear in the eyes of her comrades, a fear that mirrored her own. General Krasthor, attempting to regain control, issued frantic orders over the comm system. Regroup! Focus your fire on their flanks! But his command seemed futile in the face of the overwhelming assault. Cora, amid the chaos, tried to maintain her composure and lead her unit. But the realization that they were facing an enemy with far superior technology weighed heavily on her. The conscripts, despite their program training and conditioning, were being pushed back, suffering casualties at an alarming rate as the battle raged on, with the alien fighters dominating the skies. The conscripts fought desperately, but it was clear that they were losing ground. The situation was rapidly deteriorating, and for the first time, the possibility of a defeat loomed over them. As the alien assault continued, Korra and the conscripts faced the harsh reality that they were not the invincible force they had been led to believe. This encounter was a stark reminder of the vast and unknown dangers that lurked in the cosmos, and the conscripts were caught in the midst of it, fighting a battle that was quickly turning into a struggle for survival. The sleek fighters maneuvered through the air with an ease that made them seem almost ethereal. Their weapon systems were clearly superior, and the conscripts' return fire did little to deter their onslaught. In the midst of this chaos, General Krasthor attempted to rally his troops, but the shock of this unforeseen attack and the sheer firepower of the enemy left him struggling to maintain control of the situation. As the battle raged on, the conscripts were forced to adapt quickly to this new threat, their survival instinct kicking in against an enemy whose capabilities and intentions were unknown. The conflict on the alien planet had escalated to a level beyond anything they had anticipated, plunging them into a fight that was as much about understanding this new enemy as it was about staying alive. Take cover, Cora shouted, as she and her comrades scrambled for safety, heavily outmatched by the aerial superiority of the new enemy. General Krasthor, realizing the severity of the situation, barked orders into his communicator, Form defensive lines! Return fire! But his commands did little to stem the tide of the attack. The dart-like ships moved with precision, their weapons cutting through the ranks of the conscripts. Explosions erupted around them, sending plumes of dirt and debris into the air. The conscripts, despite their resilience and healing implants being activated, struggled to mount an effective defense against this unexpected foe. Cora, firing at the ships, felt a sense of desperation. Who are they? she yelled over the chaos. No one had an answer. The new alien force was a mystery, their sudden appearance and advanced technology a shocking development in the conflict. The battle raged on, with the conscripts struggling against the overwhelming force of the alien fighters. A critical and unprecedented event unfolded. General Krasthor, who had been orchestrating the conscripts' response from a relatively safe distance, found himself directly in the line of fire. One of the sleek, dart-like fighter ships broke from its formation, executing a rapid and precise maneuver that brought it hurtling towards General Krasthor's position. The general, caught off guard by the sudden and aggressive approach, barely had time to react. Cora, witnessing the scene unfold, shouted a warning, but it was too late. The fighter ship unleashed a barrage of energy fire, a concentrated stream of lethal force that was unrelenting and precise. The general's personal shield designed to withstand standard weaponry was no match for the advanced alien technology. It flickered and failed under the intense assault. In a matter of seconds, the unthinkable happened. General Krasthor, a symbol of Draxarian power and invincibility, was struck down. The impact of the energy beams was devastating, leaving no chance for survival. His figure was engulfed in a bright flare of light, and when it faded, nothing remained. The conscripts, witnessing the death of a Drexarian general for the first time, were stunned into momentary disbelief. The fall of General Krasthor was not just a physical loss, but a significant psychological blow. It shattered the aura of invulnerability that the Drixarians had always maintained. Cora, amidst the shock and chaos, realized the gravity of the situation. With General Krasthor gone, the command structure was in disarray. She quickly took charge, shouting orders to regroup and retreat, 
Fall back. Regroup at the secondary position. Marcus and Hector, along with the other conscripts, followed Cora's lead, pulling back from their exposed positions. As they retreated, the reality of their situation became clear. This battle was unlike any they had fought before. The conscripts regrouped at a safer location, trying to process the loss of their general while bracing themselves for the next phase of the battle. Demise of General Krausthor left Korra and the conscripts in a dire situation. They found themselves cut off from their ship, and by extension, any hope of immediate reinforcement or extraction. General Krausthor had been the crucial link in their chain of command, the sole conduit through which communications with the ship, and more importantly, with Zahak, were conducted. His death effectively severed their connection, leaving them isolated on the alien planet. Korra, now the de facto leader in the absence of any higher authority, tried to maintain order among the ranks. As they regrouped and attempted to form a defensive perimeter, the dart-like attackers continued their relentless assault. The conscripts returned fire, even though it was clearly ineffective tactic against the alien ships. In the midst of the chaos, a bright flash illuminated the sky. Korra and the others looked up, witnessing a sight that filled them with a sense of dread. It was their ship, activating the Rosen Bridge and jumping through space, escaping the conflict and leaving them behind. The realization that they had been abandoned hit the conscripts hard. They were alone, stranded on an alien world, with no means of communication and no hope of rescue. The flash in the sky, marking the departure of their ship, was a silent testament to their forsaken state. Cora, despite the desperation of their situation, tried to rally her troops. We need to move. Find cover and keep firing. Her voice, though firm, could not mask the gravity of their predicament. Conscripts, following her lead, continued to engage the enemy, but their situation was becoming increasingly hopeless. They were trapped on a hostile planet, facing an unknown and powerful adversary, with their only means of escape now gone.